Now let's exit play mode again. And so we saw how we can make um, how we can make a query, but obviously this query is not a real selection. We haven't selected anything. We just took all the elements um, in the hierarchy. Now that would be a little bit boring if that's all that the query builder could do. So let's now look at a real example. Now let's say, for example, um, how about we want to get this container element, um, which is called LM container one. Now that's very easy to do. We can do that with this sort of code. We want to have a visual element, again, call it result. And all we have to do is go builder name and the name of the element. Now let's just quickly see if that works. And sure enough, what you can see is we only select this containing um, this containing element. Let's again exit play mode. Now, one side note here, um, you can see that when you get single elements, this is a little bit different than when you get um, when you get multiple elements, because uh, on multiple elements, you basically then have to decide what to do with them, right? Um, to get <laughs> some arbitrary element that's some index or to get the whole list or whatever. That's simpler with one element, so that's why we don't have anything here, because what should we put in here now? We only have one element, so it wouldn't actually make sense to put in a dot last or a dot first, because there is only one. So this thing is a little bit simpler with single elements, and that's um, also represented later in the Q class, which is basically giving you um, single elements always. Okay. Let's now look at one more example. Um, for example, let's say that we want to get um, only those three labels here. So we have like altogether seven elements um, with our main container, even eight, uh, but um, our LM container here and the elements below those are seven elements. Three of them should be labels. So how can we do that? Now, this time we want a list with um, labels. And um, again, we call it result. What do we have to do? We go builder. And now we have to call the of type method. This will select only the types that you specify. And this time again, it's a collection. It's a, um, yes, it's several elements. So we have to say what we want to do with it. So let's give us, let's convert it to a list. And now just save that, press the play button. And sure enough, you can see we only selected our three labels. Okay, great. Um, it looks like we can use the query builder for basically all the things that we need. Now, I will now try to convince you or to show you what the, what some, sort of problem, it's not a real problem, but it's a consequence of using the, the query builder is. And um, that way, I hope you will understand why we have those three different classes, basically, and why those query and queue um, convenience, uh, convenience classes were introduced. So um, let's imagine the following case, let's say that what we now want to have is just one element with a um, specific name, but we can also get this as a collection, as a list. So it will just be a list with one element. And in a second, you will understand why why I did this as a list. Obviously, it would be more logical to just, um, just get one visual element, but technically it's possible to get this um, by name also as a list. So, um, when I will do that now, we will we will not get a result immediately. But let's just imagine that uh, we wanted to get this um, this one element. This corresponds to this first uh, first square here. Okay. Now let's now say that somewhere later um, I would need the second element. So you might think, okay, I can do just that, right? I use the builder, I again say name, and I am getting the second element. Again, it would be it would be more logical to just get out one element, but that would mean now here I have my first element, I have my first square, and here I'm having my second square. And obviously the same thing could be done for the third square. 
So obviously our expectation now would be that this variable holds the first square, this one the second, and this the third. To actually check if this is true, what we can do is uh, reuse our small decoration method here. For that, I just have to, oh, I'm sorry, I just have to put this into this result variable. So I'm just copying the um, one of those results that I have from my, from my queries into the result variable. And now what would we expect to happen um, in the game view? We would obviously expect to have the third element in this, um, in this result variable, right? Now, when I press the play button, what you can see is what we actually have is all three of those squares. Let's exit play mode again. And now the reason why that is happening is that I told you before when we looked at the doc documentation briefly that the UI builder, it, it wants to give you more power than just using those elements um, on their, uh, those methods on their own, like this uh, name. What it also wants to allow you is to chain those methods and to actually aggregate selectors. So you can say, okay, I want something with of type label, but with this name or with a substring in the name or something like that. And also just the active elements or something like that. You can chain and combine those selectors. But what you cannot really do is to reset the builder. So what is happening here and why we got all those three elements is that it kind of found the first here and it accumulated, it kept kind of um, accumulating those elements because every time we called a to list, we also called a build. So we selected the first element here, then we selected the second element here and the third one here, and we added all of those to this result set that we get. And technically what you can actually do is literally chain those, um, those selectors just like that. So as you will see in a second, this element, this query element four, is actually um, basically the same as calling those three lines um, here because we take the builder and we chain all those three selectors. Now when I save that, again, you can see we have all three, um, all three squares selected just as we had before. But obviously that was not what we were expecting and that was not what we actually wanted. So if we wanted to achieve um, our original goal and that was getting the single elements what we would have to do is for all of those lines in between kind of get ourselves a new a new builder and then do builder 2 and get the name and that would then work but we would always need this uh, this next instance of the builder and then for the third one we would also have to we would have to do the same. And so what you can do just, uh, what you can see already just for this rather simple task of um, getting different elements at different points, it is pretty tedious to every time construct a new uh, query builder. And basically this is the thing that uh, the query library is solving for you. It's basically doing the thing for you um, and so you can write a lot less code and focus on what is really, um, really important for you.